So day three of the trip, we're just coming out of Hamburg now. We're heading to the ferry, which will take us across to Denmark. I think it's about an hour crossing or so. But this is uh, day three. I thought sure how the videos are structured. But this is day three. Settle down, grab yourself a cup of coffee. I'd absolutely love one. Pour one for me. And I'll see you after the intro. Chopsy, roll it. There's the boat. Where's she going? Deep trips. Germany, we are here. I've never been to Hamburg before, so I'm just going to have to wait for people to go and do one. We've got a ferry to catch. I don't fancy getting knocked off. Oh, it's too hot in there. Barrier gate, we're now possibly missing the ferry. So we've got to be there by half time and checked in. And it's a fair old, fair old way yet, I think. So, this is a de restricted bit of autobahn, so we're trying to make it a little bit of time. I don't like doing over under my hour before I've had the, the coffee in the morning, but today we've got no choice. We've got some time to make up. If we miss the ferry, I think it's four hours to go the long way round to Denmark. So if we miss the ferry, it's a four-hour ride around. Cool, blimey. Well, after a rather fast stint on the de-restricted autobahn, I saw 225 on it, and then it hit the top speed limiter. I think 225 is about 140. And I know there's been a beer top speed limit about 140. <laughs> when when you've got, you got panniers on, it gets quite light at the front. And it's sort of under, it gets quite exciting around the 140. <laughs> you don't want to go any faster than that. It feels fast. But I don't know if we're here on time. I don't know if we've made it. We're going across this bridge. I don't know where the ferry port is. I know we have meant to be here for half past nine. So whether we've missed checking or not, I don't know. I do not know. If we miss this ferry, I don't know what the option's going to be. Whether it's going to be we wait if there's another one, or whether it means we've got to do the long ride round. I don't know. I just realised this bike, you can, uh, it's a new one on me, but you can change down on the quick shift to while the throttle's open. So you can do full throttle and full throttle down shifts. <laughs> I didn't know I did it. That's not something they shout about on this bike. You can do that, but yeah, it works really nicely. I'll show you when we're somewhere appropriate, which isn't now. Oh, I haven't got any of the reservation details. I, hopefully, James has got it all. Looks like we might have bloody made it. We we made it. Huh? We made it. Hey. Yeah. What time's it departing? Quarter past. Quarter past. I asked if we made it, and she said we had. So. Oh, excellent. Find out if you wow. Oh, yeah, Yippee! Here we go, another ferry, second ferry of the trip. I think this crossing's about an hour straight into Denmark. That looks rather slippery, doesn't it? Oh, strap down job, is it? Another strap down. The strapping commence. Could you go that put on that Dave, could you while I push push the bike down a bit? Stand on the peg. Oh yeah, that's just trick. Trips and tricks. Let's just go for the side stand. It's rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> How good's yours? Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> First of mine. Oh. Right, is it coffee time now? I need a coffee. That 
was a very uneventful crossing. Had the coffee, finally had the coffee and a croissant. And uh, yeah, that's right. And welcome, welcome to Denmark. <laughs> welcome to Denmark. The home of uh, uh, Cronenberg. It's Carlsberg. Carlsberg. Oh, it could be Cronenberg as well. Home of Carlsberg. Uh, hmm. Just fella. What else is uh, Denmark famous for? The mermaid, uh, craft beers, and uh, loose women. <laughs> they work better in first gear. Let's have a little sit rep then while we're uh, while we're waiting. We have done a thousand and eleven kilometres so far. We have done. Uh, 12, nearly 13 hours in the saddle and I think and we've got 138 kilometres range left so over a thousand kilometres I don't know how many more miles we've got to do today but I think we go to uh, Copenhagen now I want to see what Denmark has to offer riding wise I don't know, I don't know what the ride is going to be like in Denmark <laughs> it's, the, it's the slow speed, don't touch the floor game, James, is it? He should have said we were playing. Me and, me and James have a game. Oh, James, that was pretty, pretty, pretty full effort, James. Thank you. I got away with it. So I was saying, full, full throttle downshifts. Fourth gear, full throttle. There you go. Suzuki don't shout about that. I don't know why they don't shout that that's a feature you can do on this bike. I never even knew. I've got one of these. It works. It turns out there's actually a ferry every half an hour. <laughs> so if we had this there, we'd just have to wait half an hour for the next one. It would not have been the end of the world. So we spent about 20 minutes on the... Uh, motorway and we've just come off going for this little town. I think this this is like a, it's like another landmass between so we're not on the main landmass now, we're on like a little island I think. And I think there'll be another bridge to take us onto the mainland. But we've got across this little, little island. So yeah it's very it's not much here as you can see it's pretty uh, pretty deserted really. There we go look said we were on an island, didn't I? said we were, did I? This is quite a big bridge. It was up for quite a long way. And this, I think, will take us onto mainland Denmark now, the other side of this bridge. And it's got trains on. Square-looking houses. They're sort of a bit boring-looking, aren't they? Very uh, sort of symmetrical. I can imagine Hansen and Gretel popping in there. A bit of gingerbread. Or are they Swedish? Hansen and Gretel, are they Swiss? German? Austrian? One of those. It's a little bit depressing, isn't it? <laughs> it's got a little bit of a depressing vibe. Like South East England in the 70s. Oh, a bit of lunch, a bit of lunch. Well, I've had today's a, a croissant. little lunch stop. This place here we've just been to. Cafe Valaudi. <laughs> the portions seem to be huge. Absolutely huge. So um, yeah nachos but the biggest portion I've ever had. Sometimes you get nachos you don't get enough do you? So that's a little carver side of chips and they didn't even touch the chips. Massive portions. They brought <laughs> the coke over. It's like a litre of coke. So I think this could be a common theme 
this portion size. So uh, I'm all over that, lovely. And lots of uh, blonde haired beauties. I thought you had a, a glass of milk there, Jace, for a bit. <laughs> bit spicy, that didn't it? Glass of milk. There's that fella. There's that fella again. Well, trouble, you, troublemaker. You have the trousers. <laughs> So that was lunch. Very, very nice indeed, actually. I've never seen portions like it. <laughs> I think it was quite pricey. It's all in uh, Krona, is it? So I didn't really know how much everything was, but massive portions. I'm all for that. I can go for big portions. But now we're heading off to the photo point now. We're going to get a bit of photo and video done. But it's about 45 minutes away, and we should have some reasonable roads, I think, on the way there. Oh, I'm stuffed. <laughs> I'm absolutely stuffed. Something light tonight. Burger. Now, as I mentioned before, just chatting to the uh, Suzuki guys, you know, what, why have they done this trip? I mean, they've got, on the way back, they've got, you know, people from MCN and all, all the rest of it as well, you know, and yeah, I think it's the reason, the, well, the reason is because, you know, the bike received, didn't have the best of launches. Then, of course, was, was tested in the winter by all the magazines and the first bikes arrived in the UK so it all went out and all really basically de due to you know these slightly subpar o OEM spec tyres and you know they're not great they don't get great feedback once they're all warm and the conditions are lovely you know they grip but they don't tell you too much of, of what's going on with the bike and that was a big problem you know for this for the sake of saving probably 50 quid for bike per bike putting something decent on it and it's not suzuki gb's fault i mean they could have changed all the tires but you know it's really what what comes from the factory so what they decided to put on in japan and those tires are basically built to a spec they're actually even i was chatting to dunlop about them at suzuki live so i said you know it's actually these sorts of OEM spec tyres, they're, they're damaging Dunlop's reputation. You know, they make some bloody good tyres, Dunlop, and and having these OE spec tyres, people think, oh, had, had Dunlop, someone had bought it, they were terrible, not putting those back on again. You know, if I was Dunlop, I'd be I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm not doing it because it is, it does damage their reputation. They're actually built, chatting to Dunlop, they were saying, you know, they're actually a kilo lighter. The, the tyres from Japan are, are made to this spec, are like are lighter than the a, a proper tyre, let's call them. So they save a couple of kilos on the weight of the bike, so that looks good on the spec sheets. Obviously they're built to a budget, they're cheaper, they must be, they must, I don't know how they're a couple of kilos lighter. Must be not as much banding in them or, you know, whatever, but they're, they're definitely built to a price point, and it, which is a shame. So I think this, this whole event is just to sort of let people realise that the GX is very good, you know, don't don't go on those first impressions and, you know, I, I've got a long term out, I really rate it, you know, if you've seen my comparison we did with the XR, the new XR, me and Greg did a comparison with this bike, we both would have taken the GX with our own money because it's four and a half thousand pounds cheaper than the equivalent spec XR, yeah, the XR is a bit more powerful, it's got a bit more drive, yeah, everything, apart from the suspension is, is may, and the riding position, is maybe a slightly better on the XR, but it's not four and a half thousand pound better. You know, and that's why we both would have gone with the GX. The superpower of this bike is this suspension. It's so plush, so plush. You know, and with a decent set of rubber on this bike, it does. I mean, it, you've seen in the video we've not been hanging around. <laughs> even with these stock tyres on, you know, you can chuck it around, it handles dynamically, it's as good as the XR, you know, and that's what I think people don't realise, I think it's, if you want a proper sports tour, you get the XR, the GX is not sporty enough, but it really is, and uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's why I love it, you know, and you've got all the other convenience things, and it's Japanese reliability, there's a lot to be said for that, it doesn't have hill hole control, which is on the XR, you know, but if you can live without hill hole control. This trip has really sort of proved, so I knew it already. I knew the GX, I didn't need convincing by coming on this trip. I knew the GX was great, but I hadn't done serious, serious miles on it like we have on this trip. 
and it's coped with it extremely well. You know, it's just a very flexible motor. The gearbox and the quick shifter is sublime. You know, it's very easy to cover distance on it. The only slight criticism I would have is the seat is a little bit hard and I don't think it's well padded but it's just not wide enough if you've got a big ass it's not quite wide enough to support all your ass but the reason they've done that is because this bike has a I think it's 845 millimeter seat height you know, it's relatively tall they made it quite thin so the more vertically challenged can get their legs down easily but if you're taller I would have preferred a bit more width in the seat but you know it's, it's, it's not the end of the world the leg position a lot of people complain that it was a bit tight in the leg I'm six foot two I've not struggled at all on this trip with my legs feeling like they're a bit tight a couple of times I've had to just do that and put my legs out but you do that on any bike that's just moving around you know and if you do need to get a bit of weight off your ass you can stand up on the pegs as well the bars are quite low it's not the easiest bike in the world to stand up on and you tend to have to, resh to reshuffle a little bit well, I've got size 12 feet, so they tend to, they can hit the exhaust a little bit, so I have to reshuffle. But you can stand up, take weight off your ass. You know, it is, it's a great bike. Any other niggles? Any other thing I think which is a bit, a little bit poor, if I'm being honest, is the fact that the front screen, you can't adjust it without tools. It's a 20 minute job to change the screen height. You know, Suzuki will say, yeah, but once your screen's set, you don't really move it, you don't really touch it. That's, that's true, that's true to a degree, but if you like, especially on a tour like this where it's hot, if you get hot, sometimes you need the airflow, so you might want to drop the screen to have the air. You can't do that easily. So that's a little bit of a shame, and it must have, can't have been that hard to have some sort of mechanism to pull that screen up and down. It doesn't have to be electric, but it needs to be adjustable without tools so that's probably my biggest gripe actually is the screen is not adjustable without tools but you could say it is sort of fit and forget to a degree with the screen isn't it and i found with the screen in the uppermost position which this is in the lowermost position that and that little add-on and a little pyramid add-on on top i get perfect cover behind that and i'm 6'2 I, I can do 90 cruise at 90 100 miles an hour without any buffeting on the helmet with that little add-on and the screen in the upper position. So come down here, put my trousers on, put my strides on, there's no one around. What happens? As soon as I take my pants off, <laughs> let the motorcyclists turn up. Wow, this is gorgeous. They seem to be very horse friendly here. Just, <laughs> every other house seems to have a horse, their own horse. Oh shit. It's absolutely gorgeous this little route through these through these twisties. Really, really nice. I've asked if I could just get a, an outline of the route map because it'd be good to share that in case anyone does want to recreate our little trip. There's been some epic roads, but there's also been quite a lot of motorways. I think it's it's unavoidable not having to uh, you know spend a little bit of time on the motorways but bring the right bike for it and it's no bother that quick shifter is bloody excellent eh? Trees starting to turn. Look in there. A moss roof. What's <laughs> that? It's a thatched roof which has got a bit overgrown. Look at this place.
Wow, we've just done our photos and video guffage. Pulled out as weather's turned out lovely. Turned out lovely. This must be about 23, 24, do we reckon? Something like that, or do you think it's hotter? 23, 25. Oh, I'm not going by that Suzuki temperature gauge. It's, 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 it's over optimistic. Yeah, it's, it's a bit optimistic. But although it does feel like it's. Yeah. It it's how you feel. It tells you what, what you, how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> That's the ambient temperature inside my jacket. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> What's he's doing his little bit? James is gutted because he's dropped his helmet. Oh no. He's gutted. He's not happy. He's got a face on him. <laughs> <laughs> Up to, on the grass, though? No, on the no, road. Damn it. Scuffage. Well, you know, the S had to come out. Of uh, visor scuffage. Well, that was uh, rather spectacular. Wherever that place was, I'm still on the visor. That was very pretty. So, we are now going to Copenhagen and we are going to be riding over the bridge. And that's the final uh, thing we've got to do. It's already five o'clock, right? We've done 1178 kilometres since we left Suzuki GB in Milton Keynes. I don't know, we've probably got another 50 to do, I guess, 50-ish. And that's it. We have spent 16.52 hours riding. That's how long the bike's logged that it. it's been turned on. 16.52 hours in two and a half days. So it's quite a, lot of, quite a lot of seat time in two and a half days, I think you agree. And it's been uh, thoroughly Thoroughly really fantastic actually. As I said at the beginning, the bikes are being ridden back by other people. So we're flying home tomorrow and the bikes are being ridden back. Right, see you at the bridge. See you in Copenhagen. Here we go, this is the bridge to Sweden. Look at that bad boy. I don't know what speed limit is across here. Look at that bridge. The wind farm out there. Wow. Look at that. Five countries. UK, Netherlands, Germany, Denmark, and now Sweden. Okay, for five minutes. Look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Here we go. Well, we're going into Sweden. That's the bridge. This is Sweden. <laughs> so we're literally going into Sweden, then turning around and coming back again. But it still counts as going to spin to Sweden. Still counts. Nothing to declare. We're in Sweden. Welcome to the fifth country of the tour. Sweden! Right, where's Ikea? I want some meatballs. Copenhagen. There you go. Video would not be complete without a little bit of Capen... Cope, can you say it? Capen... Ho <laughs> Copenhagen by night. I don't know how far in we're going, I don't really... It's, very, it's not a very uh, tall city, is it? It's very... Uh, from here, anyway, there's not many skyscrapers or anything. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour series. It's been nice to come and do something a little bit different. In Denmark, touring to Denmark, it's a little bit different, isn't it? So, you know, massive thanks to Suzuki for sort of organising this. And uh, the only thing I wish I could have done, I wish I could have bought my own bike. But hey ho. Hey ho. It's less miles on mine, I suppose, isn't it? Less miles on my tyres. I hope you've enjoyed it. There will be that tracer comparison coming at some point. Maybe we'll even take those on a little bit of a trip just to give it, again, a bit more of a flavour and, and real world sort of test, you know, where you've got your own luggage in there, you've got the bikes laden up. And that's been another thing which has quite impressed me with this, is the agility when it's fully loaded is still very good. But there we are. Hope you've enjoyed it. 
take care of yourselves. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.